Currently, you can find 161 different roller coasters spread out over the 15 parks that make up the Six Flags chain. 77 of those coasters were built before the year 2000. And just like everything else, roller coasters have a lifespan. So here are the next 10 Six Flags roller coasters that will get removed by the year 2030. And on top of that, I'm going to share with you the perfect replacement coaster, in my opinion, for that plot of land. Starting things off, Ninja Six Flags St. Louis opened in 1990 at the park, but first opened in 1986. The park's foreign version coaster actually has a very interesting history. That's because Ninja was originally started by Arrow, and then after the project was underway, Arrow fell into bankruptcy. The project was then picked up and completed by Vacoma. So that kind of explains why this coaster is so bad, and there's really zero benefit for keeping it around at the park. The Perfect Replacement, a new Vacoma coaster, along the same size as the new for 2022 Phoenix. This coaster would feature 3 to 4 inversions, 60 miles an hour, and a height of around 140 feet or so. This would then give Six Flags St. Louis their best roller coaster in the history of the park. Welcome to Theme Park Predictions and more. My name is Brandon and this list was a very fun one to come up with. And this next roller coaster I've never been on before. And I think I'm better off keeping it that way. Monster, Le Ronde, opened in 1985. Canada's only racing wooden coaster has seen better days. And it's obvious that Le Ronde is in dire need of something. Heck, anything at this point. The perfect replacement. I think we all know where this is going to go, but Six Flags should call up RMC and have them convert Monster into a hybrid coaster. But I don't think it makes sense for the park to transform both sides of the coaster into a hybrid. Instead, create one phenomenal layout with just one track, much like RMC did with Iron Gwazi. Not only would this cost a lot less, it would also give RMC a lot more room to work with. Dahlonega Mine Train, Six Flags Over Georgia, opened in 1967. I, for the most part, enjoy all the Aero Mine Train coasters, except this one, because it's that bad. Over Georgia's Mine Train really does need to go, and it takes up a huge piece of real estate that the park could develop into something much better long term. The perfect replacement, a Vacoma family boomerang would add a great attraction that is a step up from the Joker Funhouse coaster, or maybe a family launch coaster of some type. Heading to Six Flags America for War, which opened in 1998, and this wooden coaster offers one hell of a layout. But the sad thing is, War is a very rough ride. With already having Wild One, there really isn't any reason why this coaster is still in operation in its current form. The perfect replacement, we've seen it with every conversion. RMC comes in and works miracles on the older, lesser popular wooden coasters and then open them as one of the best coasters in the park if not the world. So I hope that is the plan for Six Flags America. Heading down to Six Flags Over Texas for La Vibora, which opened at the park in 1986 but originally in 1984. This is the only intimate coaster at Six Flags Over Texas, and it's coming to the end of its lifespan. I honestly don't see it being in operation come 2030. When Over Texas decides to remove this classic, it's going to free up a very intriguing plot of land that is located along the park's entrance area. The perfect replacement. I've said it before in past videos, but I really like this spot being home to a new SNS Axis coaster in the future. Visually, this would look sick and create excitement for guests walking to the front gate. Whatever type of coaster that gets built in this location, I just hope that it really makes a huge impact on the park's already impressive skyline. Viper Six Flags Magic Mountain, which opened in 1990. Shockwave, Great American Scream Machine, and Vortex. All three Aero Mega Loopers that are sadly no more. So how much time does Viper have left? 
the perfect replacement. I created a video on just this that you really need to check out after you finish this video. And the link for that's going to be in this video's description. Diamondback Frontier City opened at the park in 1993, but originally in 1978. Sadly, this is one of only three aero launched loop coasters left. While I really hope that Frontier City decides to preserve this coaster so it can stick around for decades to come, I just don't see that happening. The perfect replacement, a Chance Hyper GTX. These coasters provide a maximum thrill with a very doable price tag. Frontier City would finally get a signature coaster that would look great along the front of the park. Now it's time to head to New England for the next coaster, and that's going to be Flashback, located at Six Flags New England. And this ride opened at the park in 2000, but originally in 1985. Now whose great idea was it to place two boomerangs right next to each other? Because that's really what I want to know. I mean, come on now. The perfect replacement by combining this area along with the plot of land that Goliath sat on would really be perfect for a new launch coaster. I would love to see something along the same size as Max Force at Great America. I could also even see a premier launch coaster like Icebreaker open in this location. Regardless, Six Flags New England will be opening a launch coaster as their next coaster. Heading a little west for the next park, and that's going to be Great Escape. And I'm looking at you, Alpine Bobsled, which opened at the park in 1998, but originally in 1984. Each year, you hear rumors about Great Escape's bobsled coaster getting the axe. And really, it does make sense. Not only is this coaster old, but it does take up a huge area, so it has to be near the end of its lifespan. The perfect replacement. This all lies on whether the new Six Flags management wants this coaster to be catered to families or thrill seekers. But let's talk about what the Great Escape really needs, and that is a staple steel coaster. Something like a new next-gen Vacoma coaster, or I could also see a Chance Hyper GTX working beautifully for the Great Escape. Now before I talk about the last coaster on the list, I wanted to share with you some other coasters within the Six Flags chain that I could also see getting removed soon. Firebird, Six Flags America opened at the park in 2012, but originally in 1990. This was the first B&M coaster ever created. And while it's not the worst ride ever, it has already gone through one relocation and then a floorless conversion. I just don't know if Firebird will still be at Six Flags America come 2030. Runaway Mine Train, Six Flags Over Texas, which opened in 1966. And this was only the second roller coaster ever by Aerodynamics at the time. While it's not perfect, it is rough and getting way up there in age. Something will have to be done with this coaster over the next few years if it has a future at the park. Predator Six Flags Darien Lake opened in 1990. Now we know that Predator is getting some sections of the track replaced with a new GCI Titan track this year, so that's at least a start. As for the future of this coaster in its current form, it's going to be very interesting to see how it looks 10 years from now. Ninja Six Flags Magic Mountain, which opened in 1988. The classic aerodynamic suspended coaster is truly one of the best family models out there. And it's a shame that there are only five left in operation in the entire world. So how much time does Ninja have left? What I hope that Magic Mountain does is in a few years get all new track for this coaster and get a pair of the Vacoma suspended coaster trains for it. With those next gen trains with all new track, this coaster would instantly improve. And in my opinion, a ride like this needs to stay at Magic Mountain. And now, for the coaster that I think has the best chance of getting removed within the Six Flags chain by 2030. And that's going to be the Boss, Six Flags St. Louis, which opened in 2000. This wooden coaster offers one of the most unique and impressive layouts for any coaster of its kind. We're talking 4,631 feet of track, a drop of 150 feet coming off a 120 foot tall lift hill. If Six Flags wanted to, they could build arguably a top 5 coaster in the world at Six Flags St. Louis. 
the perfect replacement, a RMC hybrid. Just imagine what this layout would look like if RMC was given the call. I really do think Boss will be converted to a hybrid at some point within the next five years. Six Flags St. Louis desperately needs a new coaster, and a coaster like this would pack this park every day. So that wraps up my list of coasters that I think could get removed at a Six Flags Park by 2030. If you are interested in the history of coaster installations within the Six Flags chain, including the year the chain added 20 different coasters, be sure to check out my Six Flags coaster timeline video where I rank each year from 2000 through 2020 based on the company's new coaster installs. Are there any coasters in the chain that I did not mention that you think should be on the list? Be sure to let me know in the comments. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Remember to smile today, think positive, and keep riding coasters.